Here with Brown's third round draft pick, Sione Takitaki. Sione, congratulations and welcome officially to Cleveland and the Browns. Thank you. Uh, excited to be here. Um, to come prove them right, you know, they brought me in, so I'm grateful for this organization. You guys, you know, um, you know, videoing me, things like that, so I'm excited. So when you got the phone call, we know the story, now we know where you were, but just, you know, did you ever, you can never prepare for a moment like that when you know your life is changing. What was it like now that you've had a few days, because I talked to you right after it happened, what's it like now you have a few days to kind of reflect back on it? Um, yeah, it's it's still surreal, you know, it's still a, a shocker, but, you know, coming here and, and um, you know, being here for the first day and stuff like that is definitely hitting me that, you know, I definitely got to lace up the boots now, show them why they brought me in. Um, but yeah, man, I'm still enjoying it, to be honest. I feel like I'm 15 years down the road, I'm still going to be super excited for this moment. Um, I'm grateful for all, you know, the whole, the whole organization, you guys, and... I'm excited, man. I don't know what else to say. I'm really, I'm really excited. So, yeah. Well, we're excited to have you as well. And when you think about your journey, because your story is unique. You had some troubles early in your career. You got married, got your life back together. You said your wife is your rock and helped you get there. What was the moment when you said, man, I've got to get this together or I'm going to potentially give away a dream now that you've been drafted in the NFL? Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, incident before I got in trouble again was definitely like, hey, I'm going I'm to lock it up. Um, but, you know, even even the, you know, the last incident I got into, um, definitely, you know, that year being away from football, it all kind of, you know, worked. You know, I feel like all of it kind of worked this course, but definitely that, that last incident was kind of, you know, the nail in the coffin. Hey, you know, if you don't get, you know, get things in line, your dream and everything you ever wanted is gone out the window. And so, boom, finally just made it happen. I uh, got my life right, things like that. I still got a lot of learning. I'm young, you know sure. what I mean? Um, I, I'm 40. I, I got a I, lot yeah, of learning, I, man. I don't know it all, but uh, <laughs> I definitely knew that I wanted to take football serious, school, stay out of trouble, things like that, and tech, you know, what I wanted. And then you went from that situation to being named team captain in your final year at BYU. What did that mean to you? Yeah, it meant, it meant a lot. You know, it meant a lot to, um, you know, to be a little troublemaker at first and then, you know, my final year. You know, I always had a good relationship with the locker room, the guys. I'm a locker room dude. I'm a goofster. I always clown. So, um, you know, to get that 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 uh, captain thing was, you know, meant a lot. You know, kind of put the stamp on on my college career, things like that. Um, that I wanted to accomplish there. Um, you definitely always want to get better, but I feel like that captain thing was definitely big for me. Just knowing my, you know, my whole course, my whole path. So when I remember talking to Christian Kirksey when he was drafted, was a captain at Iowa, was a guy that was like the spiritual leader, won all their awards for being the leader. And I remember asking him the question I'm about to ask you, and it is this. What's it like going from being a captain to now somebody who was drafted and now coming into an organization where you have to kind of prove everything all over again? Yeah, I feel like uh, I like it. I like this feeling. You know, I always wanted to be the, the little guy again in the locker room or the guy that's like has to earn his stripes. I feel like that's where I thrive, you know, where I thrive at. Um, so I'm excited, man. You know, I'm excited to come in, earn the, you know, the vets respect, you know, Kirk, all them, all, all those guys, show them that I can play some ball. And I feel like coming out here and, and um, just doing my part, doing the, you know, um, doing my part, you know, working hard, things like that, everything will fall in line. What did Freddie Kitchen say to you guys upon getting here for a rookie minicamp? He said, bring it, man. And we, you're here for a reason. Um, now, you know, it's time to work. And uh, I feel like he couldn't have said that any better. You know, it's time to work. Um, you got an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, all the guys here right now. So you could prove it or, or you can't. Or you could just sit down and, and uh, uh, you know, already go, go off of what you, you know, your, your last success. So, yeah. What was it like when the coaches came to a BYU and said, okay, you're not going to play defensive end anymore. We're going to put you at linebacker. And now to see that you've thrived in that role so much so that you were one of the big risers in the draft, end up going in the third round here to the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, um, so that, situ that, that was always a smooth situation. We kind of knew, I even knew like the year before, I was doing great at DN. You know, I did, you know, I was a productive player, um, but they felt like, you know, just my future and things like that, you know, me wanting to play for the NFL, they're like, you know, we're going to put you back at linebacker. Um, but yeah, that DN spot was great for me too. You know, I could definitely hold the edge, things like that. It definitely helped me out. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, and you're going to be blitzing, I'm sure, yeah, at times. Yeah, you get like, yeah. So it kind of helped me out, you know, for all these teams. And obviously, the Browns definitely took a look at that to show them, oh, dang, this kid has some versatility. And so um, it, it helped me more than, it, you know, definitely. 
do you feel like you're still kind of scratching the surface at, at the linebacking position because it is relatively new to you? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I finally got a full year playing stack linebacker, you know, at, at the college level. And I feel like coming here, I'm only going to get better. You know, so many good mentors here, coaches and things like that. And I feel like I'm just going to increase my game. Um, and I'm learning every day, you know, learning every day about the position and things like that. So I'm sure you know Elliot Wolf is obviously a big fan of yours and was a big part of the of the recruitment process. What what's kind of what's that relationship been like for you? Yeah, um, so I haven't really you know talked to him quite quite a bit, but I, I, I've seen you know he's been shouting me out. So I definitely want to shout my guy out, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. I know he's a great guy, and um, I feel like over this process I'll talk to him more. Yeah. So yeah. we had an opportunity to watch him tape with John Dorsey of all the rookies in this class, and mm -hmm. somebody said, "Well, what is it that you love about Taki Taki?" And he said, "Well, what do I love? Let me show you this." And he puts on the Wisconsin game, <laughs> and obviously that was probably a big moment for you that really put you on. You guys knocked Wisconsin off. I think you had 12 tackles in that mm -hmm. game, and what stood out to me is. Fullbacks are coming, guards are pulling, and you're just like, get out. You didn't care. Rent right through them, oh, making yeah. tackles for loss. Smash mouth football, man. That's the only way to play. I feel like if you play like that, you know, you'll definitely get noticed. Um, but there's always a time to, you know, play finesse too, and I feel like that's what I, um, you know, pat my game on. I still got to learn a lot, but I feel like I know when to be aggressive and when to be finesse and to be smooth. And so, um, yeah, I feel like that game kind of showed it, you know, how physical I could play. Playing against a really physical team, um, yeah, man, shout Dorsey out too, man. That's my guy, yeah. <laughs> Zione, what's something you want the fans, because I'm sure you've figured it out already, Browns fans are pretty crazy. What's one thing you want the fans to know about you? Um, I'm a great guy, man, you know what I mean? I love hiking. Um, um, a nature man. Yeah, I'm a nature guy, you know, I'm a nature guy, definitely. Um, and you're getting, a, you know, you're getting an awesome linebacker who's going to come in, help the team any way he can, you know, special team, defense, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, man, shout out all the Cleveland you know, Browns fans, man. Much love. Well, we are certainly excited to have you here, and uh, congratulations and excited to see you get going on your journey now as a member of the Cleveland Browns. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.